Hi, Derek Beard of Whiskey Clan. Uh, welcome to this episode of Beard of Whiskey. I'm your host, Russ Heaps, and today I am in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm here on a little fraternity brother outing with uh, uh, eight other guys that who we all get together uh, usually about once a year and do something silly. And uh, we, the last time we were together, uh, we shot. The, the four of us shot uh, some episodes of Beard of Whiskey where we sat around and did what we do best, which was to drink some whiskey and, uh, and talk about it. So we kind of wanted to, to repeat that. Um, so sitting to my immediate left here is Wrangler Rick Fowler. Next to him is Randy Porter. And on the far end down there, uh, Last but not least, by any stretch of the imagination, is Bruce Kirkpatrick. And um, before we really get into it, and I just want to mention, uh, we all graduated from Wittenberg University. Uh, we we're a Phi Gamma Delta fraternity. We're Fijis. Uh, we graduated in a class of 73, um, which was probably uh, way before some of you were born or your parents were born. Maybe that could be the case. Um, anyway, uh, before we get started here, uh, there are a couple of things that we want to remind you about, a little, a little um, self-promotion here. And uh, Randy, what do we want the folks to do? Well, at the bottom of the screen, there's a little thumbs up button. If you click on that, it's called like and subscribe. So we just want everybody to subscribe so you can see these new videos that come out once a week. Every Thursday. <laughs> at 12 noon East Coast time. That's all there is to it. Uh, so this segment we're featuring uh, something that, that Rickner wanted to bring to us and some of us are more excited about it than others. It is a scotch. <laughs> scotch. <laughs> uh, but Rick, what do we have? This is uh, an Akintoshan three wood scotch. Uh, you might recall last year I profiled Blanton's single single barrel, which is uh, probably my favorite go-to uh, domestic whiskey with an EY. This is a whiskey with a Y. Which tells you there's something wrong right uh, there. But go ahead. So uh, not too long ago uh, I was introduced uh, to a really good whiskey of Balvaney 15 year, and um, which is pretty pricey, very good. Um, you know, I tend to be more of a, a bourbon drinker, but uh, recently have acquired a taste for Scotch whiskey. And uh, I discovered this uh, Akintoshan, which is Gaelic. It stands for corner of the field. Uh, and also is known, it's near Glasgow, Scotland. So it's uh, Glasgow's malt whiskey. And interestingly enough, it's also referred to as a breakfast whiskey because of its... Uh, I like the sounds of that. <laughs> because of its... Uh, it goes well with eggs. It's sweet. It goes well before 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, we might not want to go there. Uh, but There's no way you can drink all day if you don't start in the morning. That's the way I <laughs> But you'll notice it has a sweet, delicate finish. So with that, we might want to have a sip and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay. Definitely peaty. Wow, I like that. Um, Ports is our other Scotch uh, turncoat in, in our group here. So yeah. um, I, I'm I'm okay with it. Here's a stumper for you. Okay. Um, when we were at the uh, Whiskey Vault, we were at Austin's Whiskey Vault a couple of days ago, having a grand old time. Um, Andrew showed us a map of Scotland. Right. Where does this fall in that? Well, this is on the west coast of, of Scotland, but <clears throat> unlike the when Andrew was talking to us, this has a, a little peat finish, but it's not particularly overly peaty because the, the real peaty scotches come from Iowa. 
And this is not an island? This is not an island. Is this a, is a highland then? Uh, no, it's not a highland. Uh, it would be off coast. coast. Is it on the coast? It's on the west. <laughs> there you go. That's a dead giveaway. <laughs> it, it's on the west coast of Scotland, uh, right across, um, I think Isla is an island, uh, but this is right across uh, the water on the mainland. Uh, and there are, I believe in and around Glasgow, there are six distilleries. This <coughs> one uh, was built in 1800, uh, and it uh, was owned by, uh, I think it's called the Balmore Morrison Group, and as a lot of things go with these distilleries, they end up getting rolled up into a conglomerate. So in 2014, uh, Beam Centauri bought the uh, remainder of the Balmore Morrison Distillery Group. Did I, did I ask anything that any of this relates to? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I did. This is holy moly. This is, a, this is for <clears throat> educational purposes, Okay, go ahead. Right? I, know, I know you looked all this stuff up. Yeah, so yeah. Well, I, I mean, if I have to, since I'm making the big bucks for doing this. You might, you might, this would be a perfect time to go pour yourself uh, a little something. <laughs> Go ahead. But, but on, the sub, on the subject of the whiskey, it's called a three wood okay. because it's aged 10 years in American bourbon barrels and then it is aged a year in Oloroso, which must be like a sherry cask. Those, those are sherry casks. Okay, and then, and then lastly, it's uh, uh, I think aged in a tequila, uh, Jimenez. Tequila? Really? Yes. Yeah, it's it's wow. it's aged in a Pedro Jimenez cast in the last year, so it's ten one and one. That's where we get the the, the three wood, and they do make a uh, a series or a line of different Scotch whiskeys. This happens to be the the three wood. Yeah, I, one of the things about Scotch whiskeys is the, the finishing barrels and, and and sherry or cask is is a traditional barrel that they'll finish them in. Right. And so they'll start with the bourbon barrels and then finish them off in oak or a sherry or sometimes port. Uh, so that's kind of a, I wouldn't say traditional, but when, if you go to your favorite liquor store and you look at all your different scotches, you'll see the different finishing woods, barrels that they'll use on some of your single malt and higher end scotch whiskeys. And the ABV on this is 43%, so it's not... Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. That's pretty small proof. It's, it's not overly, overly powerful, but uh, I guess if you were so disposed, you could have a sip before breakfast. Uh. <coughs> <laughs> There's been times in my life when I've wanted to do that. But, uh, yeah. but not two days ago after we came back from the whiskey ball. No. No. We, you know, thank... Goodness, we had, uh, there are a total of nine of us on this trip and four chose not to go and, and volunteered to get us there and get us back. And getting us, getting us there wasn't that, that big a challenge. Trying to get us back, uh, I'm sure, was, was a little tougher for those guys, so that, that was a good thing. What are, according to the, <clears throat> your research on the nose and the taste, what are we supposed to get from this particular scotch? You know? Well, you definitely obviously uh, peat. You get, you get the, the peat right you off the, the bat. You, you, that's on the nose and on the. On the You're taste. getting the sweetness from the sh from the sherry, so <clears throat> there is a little sweetness there. I think one of the challenges to drinking Scotch whiskey is just trying to figure out how to pronounce this. You know, like Akintoshin and. That's that's what we know. that's what we have <laughs> that's what we have the web for. Yeah. So I I originally was calling it Ashintoshin, but as Things are prone to be. My wife corrected me and said it's all Kentucky. So. I've met her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> we uh, actually went to school with his wife too. She right. was at college with us, but she she was a uh, Delta Gamma. And Much younger. Yes. <clears throat> She's aged well, just like this. Scotch oh, was certainly, much, like, certainly much better than you have. <laughs> that's like three points for Rick. <laughs> Be sure and show her this. Yeah. <clears throat> the other thing I would say in defense of Scotch whiskey versus bourbon is the fact that Scotch whiskeys, the flavor profiles are so different. I mean, basically when you're drinking bourbon, it's vanilla, it's your typical... Yeah, there's only three or four ways to go with bourbon. And, and 
but when you're into scotches, you've got the real peaties, and then you've got the, I mean, the, the flavor profiles are really different across the board. And I think that's one of the reasons I kind of started, as Russ said, I've gone to the dark side. <laughs> well, it was, it was interesting, you know, Hal was with us uh, at the Whiskey Vault, and he's had a progression from being a bit of a wine connoisseur to, to bourbons, and now he's converted to Scotch whiskey. So when we were drinking, you guys were clustered around the, the bourbon barrel, and I kind of gravitated over to taste some Scotch whiskey. So you can't go wrong. I, I would like to say you were missed. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick, what was the price point on this? Depending on where you buy it, I, you know, I live in Montana. I bought this at a, at a liquor store back there, and it was in the seventy to eighty dollar range, probably, which is typical. <clears throat> you might find it for a little less than that, but uh, you know, unlike a Balvenie fifteen, which is one hundred and twenty, one hundred and twenty five dollars, uh, I think this is a real bargain for the quality that you that you get. All right. And since it's a I didn't hate it. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going that far. <laughs> so as a three wood, let's tee it up. Let's right. tee it up. I'm going to have to use my last my, the one for me. Texas Miss Lily. Texas Miss Lily. And uh, see you next time.